Hello and welcome to DPN TV here at the DPN Car Collection. I just thought I'd do this little video, something uh, a little bit driven. And uh, it's about one of the things that we always try and carry in our cars when we're out and about is uh, our jump starters. We've got a couple of uh, these jump starters um, the type with the uh, jump leads there. And uh, this one actually has um, a air compressor for blowing up tyres on this as well and we always prefer to use these because we don't like um, jumping one car from another because we don't think it's necessarily good for that battery and uh, if something does go wrong or perhaps you short something out you can end up damaging two cars or damaging the good car to start another car so we always believe in using a uh, jump starter to start our cars um, these are jump starters that are readily available on um, eBay and they're normally sort of around 40 to 50 pounds uh, and they normally last about three to four years that's the batteries uh, and then they run down or they just won't jump start the car and so you more or less need to buy a whole new one of these but really apart from the battery um, there's nothing really else to go wrong. You've got the jump wires going straight to the battery, uh, some little charging wires so you can charge it up. This has got a air compressor on it, which I suppose could go wrong, but essentially uh, it is the battery is the only thing that can really go wrong. Um, and we found you can get batteries for around about £30, which you might say, well, if the whole thing's only sort of 40 to 50 you might as well buy a whole new jump starter but what we found is is that because these are on the cheap side because a lot of jump starters are really expensive ones because it will be over a hundred pounds because these are on the cheap side the batteries although they do the job they're not sort of a really high powered battery or a long sustaining battery but if you buy um, a second battery when the initial one does go wrong it's often a better quality battery and uh, a longer lasting battery so we found it's better to keep the unit and buy a battery for around about 30 35 pounds and that battery is often far better than the one that was in it so once that battery is gone you then get technically another three to four years and it's a far um, better battery in it so that's what we tend to do so i just thought i'd show you this process on this one i think a lot of them are very the same to get to that battery all you need to do is to take the back off in this one that's got the air compressor part in and uh, it's a series of screws round here so that's what i'm going to do first is remove those screws Right, so now all the screws are out, all you need to do is just to remove this back away. Now in this case, because the compressor is part of this back, you've got some wires going to it. But normally you can just stand that out the way and still change the battery. And there is the battery that's inside the unit. Right, so what we normally do is take out the jump leads so that they are loose. Because when you tip the battery out, these will get pulled inside the unit to allow the battery to come out so you can disconnect them. And if I just lift this up slightly, you can just see the details on the battery. And that's more or less all we did was typed that information into eBay and that found us a seller selling new batteries. And as I said, they're normally more heavier duty batteries than these, although the information's the same. And they're often a lot heavier than these batteries as well. Right, so what I normally do to get the battery out is simply just tip the unit forward and the battery falls out from the bottom as you can see there and that's then got it out of the casing fairly easily then it's a case then of pulling it gently through and uh, threading the leads through from the back the main jump start leads right so now i've pulled the wire through a little bit that's about as much as it'll go because you've got these two little wires which are the charging wires what i'll then do is cut this heat shrink away and um then probably we'll have to put some new heat shrink on afterwards and that'll be so we can get to the two little nuts and bolts to remove it from 
this uh, battery. Uh, the way we knew this battery really would had completely run out is that it just wouldn't jump start a car anymore, even when it had been charged. Although the little charging needle on this device would say it's fully charged, which it will do when it's put under strain, it just doesn't have the uh, power. Also, it tends to go flat a lot quicker, perhaps after a couple of weeks it's gone flat, whereas a good battery will stay well charged for uh, months without checking it normally so they're sort of the signs you uh, you get so now it's just a case of removing these from the old battery and getting it away from the unit Right, so now that heat shrink's cut away all we need to do is to uh, undo these little bolts and remove the wires from the old battery Right, so this is the new battery, it comes in quite a nice box and uh, well packed, which uh, batteries done always. And uh, the actual battery is in this nice little box, completely packed in all that um, cardboard shredded paper. What's nice about this battery is it looks like it comes with uh, the new little nuts and bolts for it as well. And there is the new battery, you can see, more or less looking identical to the uh, one that came out. Um, and uh, very similar specifications, but a much heavier uh, feeling battery. And as I say before, these normally are better battery and you buy them as a separate battery. I think they're actually down as for mobility scooters. So uh, yeah, they appear to be good batteries. And then the one we put in our other jump starter, it's been good now for about a year and a half. It is certainly a far more powerful battery. So hopefully this one will be the same. And if I just hold them up together, you can see here's the old one and uh, here's the new one. So uh, yeah, they are both exactly the same size so it should definitely fit and it's the uh, right specifications or very similar so now what we're going to do is put the new heat shrink over both wires so they protect um, the wires over the main battery connection And these are certainly worth remembering before you've connected the battery back up. So now that heat shrinks on, it's time to put the battery back in. And I'm just going to put one of our little stickers on the battery first, that's so we know it's one we've changed in the future, although we'll probably put a marking on the outside as well. And uh, once we've done that, then it is just a case of putting the battery back in. Of course, making sure you've got the red this side and the black this side, the uh, minus and uh, the plus. Moving the wires out the way and um, slotting it back in. What I'm going to do is leave it at that angle to uh, put the wires back on and hope that I make it a little bit easier and then slot it into the final position afterwards. Right, so they're now done up loosely, so there's a little bit of movement on the wires, and that's so we can then get the battery back into place, but those wires won't sort of pull on themselves. What you might do is just pull them in from the back as the battery drops down and uh, into position, and make sure no wires have been trapped, and then hopefully you can then do those up tightly with the battery in position. So now the battery's in position, I'm just going to tighten it up. And actually this heat shrink is such a tight fit, we probably won't actually heat shrink that on. All it's really doing is just protecting that little bit of bare wire between the um, joining bracket and the wire itself. 
So now we know the rough position of the wires, it's just a case of giving them the final tight and using a spanner to hold the nuts. And then the battery can go in for the last and the final time. And then again it's just letting the wires thread all through and letting the battery back in. Right, so that's the battery in nice and uh, tight. All we now need to do is uh, have one last little check and make sure there's no wires trapped. And uh, then put the uh, back of the battery jump starter back on. So that is our jump starter battery pack fully refurbished and the battery changed. Uh, all now working. If we push the test button, you see the needles reading um, in the good range. And uh, also if we uh, turn it round, the air pumps working as well so hopefully that's been of use to you and uh, of interest and uh, you may see there we put one of our little stickers on just marking the date the battery's changed so we uh, know when that battery was changed as well so although lots of battery jump starters might be uh, of slightly different design they're normally all very similar um, so hopefully that's helped you in um, thinking about doing it this way rather than going out and buying a new one you sometimes end up with a much better battery and uh, the rest of it is all working so why waste it for a battery going wrong as always don't forget to look at some of our other videos uh, you can find us on instagram and uh, twitter as well and one thing i would say this is one of the most useful tools that um, we certainly carry with us uh, in the car and it certainly got us out of trouble of jump starting a battery and it's gone flat